Hello and welcome to Tech Takshila. In this video, we will learn about consistent hashing. So let's get started. Before we dive into the video, just a quick reminder that we will briefly gloss over the concept of hashing and won't go much into details. So if you are new to the concept of hashing in general, you can pause this video at this point and follow the link in the description to understand it further. So why consistent hashing is so important? Back in year 1997, Dr. David Carger and Tom Leighton wrote a paper titled Consistent Hashing and Random Trees. They first introduced the concept and based on this work, they later founded the company Akamai, which created the world's first content delivery network. More on how to design your own content delivery network in a different video. But first, let's understand what hashing is. So hashing is just a process of taking a raw object and turning it into a key by applying some sort of hash function. In a traditional hash table, these hash keys are stored into array slots to have a O1 search complexity. So just in a case, if we change the number of array slots, it may cause all the keys to be remapped. The reason for this is that we are modding the hash keys with the number of array slots available. So let's say that you have 100 slots here. We mod the hashed key by 100 and the remainder that we get is our key to be mapped on the array. So let's say that we want to add more array slots from 100 to 101. You can see that it will impact the other keys as well because the next time you want to search for the same hash key, modding the value with 101 make it impossible for the remainder to be mapped at the same place. You may ask yourself, but why we are modding the hash key? This is done to map all the keys in the given search range and to not let them overflow. But this is bad. If there are billions or even trillions of keys to be stored in the array, then we need to remap all of them if we ever want to change the number of array slots that are available to us. That is where consistent hashing comes in the picture. The idea is to break this giant array into a small portion of keys that can be easily remapped. Let's take a real world example here to develop the intuition. While preparing for cricket season, players often participate in catch practice session. Let's assume that players are standing in a circle and the machine that throws the ball is placed in the center. The game is to not let the ball hit the ground and the players must make attempts to catch no matter what. To further make it tough, let's say players decided that everyone has to cover the ground in the clockwise direction. They should hold true even if someone decides to take a drink break. So if this player goes off the ground to take a water break, player standing next to him in the anti-clockwise direction has to cover a lot more ground just to catch the ball. This is exactly the concept behind consistent hashing. We use consistent hashing to map objects over the same cache machine. So this means that when that cache machine goes down, a node closest to this cache node in the clockwise direction would be able to take the fair share of its load until it gets replaced by this node. So to summarize, the main idea behind the consistent hashing algorithm is to associate each cache machine with one or more hash value intervals where the interval boundaries are determined by calculating the hash of each cache identifier. So let's dive deeper into how consistent hashing works in reality. We use a hashing algorithm to map both the keys and the nodes in the same circular range. And when we say nodes, we mean server nodes that would actually store those keys. The nodes are mapped on this circular range by hashing the node IDs, applying some sort of hash function here, and then modding over the search range, which is zero to n minus one in our case. So for instance, let's say we have a node ID as node one. So we are using the same hash function as hash f, to find the hash value of node 1. And then we use the search in as 0 to n minus 1. So that's why we are modding the hashed value with n here. And we get a resultant of n1 uh, as the application of this function. So we map that over the circular range here. Let's consider we have five nodes. n1, n2, n3, n4, and n5 are their respective hashed values after we applied this function on them. Now, when it comes to distribute the objects across these nodes, we use the same logic that we used for mapping the nodes over the circular range. So we applied the same hash function to get the hash values of these objects and place them over the ring as such. 
Now when we need to distort these objects, we will move in the clockwise direction. So as you can see in the picture that O5 will be mapped to N1, O1 will be mapped to N2, and so on for so forth for O2, O3, O4. It might seem from the picture that the objects are uniformly distributed over the nodes. However, things get tricky when nodes go down. So let's assume that we lost N2 and N3 nodes. So all the objects that were previously mapped to N2 and N3 nodes now will have to be mapped to N4 because we are moving in the clockwise direction. This will lead to a skewed distribution of objects over these nodes. There are several ways to solve this problem. One possible way is to use multiple hash functions to map nodes on the same circular ring, which will result in multiple instances of a node on the ring. Another approach can be to replicate the objects across nodes. If you want to learn more about these techniques, please head over to our website www.techtextual.com. We have provided the link in the description. Now let's look at the applications of consistent hashing. There are numerous applications in the real world, but two of them stand out the most. First is load balancer and second is distributed caching. So load balancers are a set of hardware that helps to distribute the load across a functional fleet of web servers. We can think of them as traffic ops trying to distribute the traffic across multiple city roads so that traffic jam can be avoided. Before we continue on to the design of load balancers, please pause this video and think how you would apply consistent hashing to design load balancers. Alright, I hope you did your due diligence to come up with a solution. Please let us know down in the comments what solution you came up with. So consistent hashing is applied by mapping the request IDs that hit this load balancer when the user sent this web request and then the server IDs of the application servers on the same circular ring just like we did in the previous example, where we were mapping the keys and the server nodes on the same circular ring. So when a request comes to the load balancer, it uses the unique identifier of the web request to find the location of the request on the edge of the circle. After that, the system walks around the ring until it encounters a functional server which will be used to serve the request. In case N2 goes down, then the request which would have been mapped to N2 will be redirected to N3 which because this is higher in the circular ring and again we can see that N3 might be overloaded by getting N2's share of load and when there is a new node like N4 needs to be added into the circular ring the similar process gets executed and the requests which were initially directed to N2 and then to N3 when N2 went down will now be redirected to N4 when N4 will replace N2 in the ring. If you would like to check the sample code for simulating a load balancing system using consistent hashing, you can head over to our website. Next in line is distributed caching. And a similar concept can be applied here as well. However, we have made a separate video that goes into lot more details of distributed caching. So please refer to that to gain more explanation and link is in the description. With this, let's review that what we have learned in this video. We have learned the difference between hashing and consistent hashing. Although both concepts are pretty similar, there are subtle differences where consistent hashing completely wins over hashing to store huge number of indexes. Then we saw that how the concept of consistent hashing works by taking a simple example of keys and nodes that are being mapped over the same circular range. In the end, we looked over the design of load balancer and how it uses consistent hashing to distribute load across multiple application server nodes. I hope you learned a high level overview of consistent hashing from this video and would be able to apply this concept in your next distributed systems project. Please give this video a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe our channel for more content. As we have mentioned earlier, you can find the in-depth explanation of this video on our website www.techtextual.com and also get a fitness check on system design. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.